So, they decided to give us a little special something with Ixalan this week uh, for the very beginning week. Now, they actually did, because they, I'm going to do two videos. One's going to be just addressing the mechanics page that they did. They actually showed us off all the mechanics for uh, Ixalan. But I'm actually, the second video is actually going to be dealing with the, um, the spoilers that leaked out, and they actually addressed the leak. They did a whole article addressing leaks and revealed a lot of the cards that got leaked. Not all of them, but a lot of them. So, but right now, we're going to talk about the mechanics and a couple of the extra cards that got spoiled besides that. A few other cards have been spoiled. So let's just get right into it. So right off the bat, we knew and saw from the leaks page, uh, vehicles are back, specifically pirate ships. Uh, the one card we had to represent uh, to show that off is Sleek Schooner, which is a cost three of any color. It's a four three vehicle crew one. If you don't know what uh, vehicles do at this point, you're on your own. <laughs> um, and, and for a vehicle, that's a perfectly fine vehicle. It's an uncommon crew. Anything that crews for one is usually going to be a good card. It's an uncommon for reason four three. Has no other abilities, but doesn't need any other abilities. Uh, we also have the Explore mechanic, which is illustrated on. One second, I'm going to just make that bigger so I can read it better. There we go. Uh, which is represented on Sh uh, oh, excuse me. Tishana's Wayfinder, a one green, two of any color, Merfolk Scout. Uh, that is 2-2. Two, two. Now, one thing, by the way, color mechanic-wise that we found out. Now, we knew I knew we were going to have green and white, uh, green and blue Merfolk. I knew we were going to have white vampires. I didn't know we were going to have black vampires as well. So we actually do have um, white, basically Orzhov color, white, black vampires, and a Simic color, green, blue, merfolk. So that's, I think, pretty cool. But Explore basically is when wait, Tish, uh, Tishana's Wayfinder enters the battlefield and explores. When you explore, reveal the top card of your library. Put that card into your hand if it's a land. Otherwise, put a plus one, plus one counter on this creature and then put that card... Um, Excuse me. Put that card back or put it into your graveyard. So basically you can either put it back to the top of your deck or self-mill. Um, first off, the card itself, uh, it's, it's, <laughs> um, it's frankly, it, it's pretty solid either way. I mean, you're getting either a land to your hand, so you guarantee you'll be able to play a land next turn. Or if you don't get a land, which is very possible too, seeing as lands only usually make up a third of the deck... Uh, at least in like 60 card decks they usually do. Then you're looking at, you're getting a 3-3 three, three for 3, and then you get to put the card back, honestly. Or you can put it in the graveyard and get something better, possibly. So, this even on the weakest creature, and this is clearly a, a weak creature, it's a common creature. This is a really cool effect. It, it's very much like a combination of, like, there's a little landfall in there. There's um, definitely some cascade in there, definitely. Um... So that's pretty cool. Uh, moving on, we have... Come on. Shuffle. There we go. Raid. No, not raid. Sorry. Treasure tokens come into play. Treasure token is a mechanic. Now, that's only going to be found on uh, pirates. Uh, and pirates apparently are going to be uh, basically restricted to the Grixis colors. Red, br uh, red black, and blue. Uh, Prosperous Pirates is a common 3-4 human pirate that costs 1 blue and 4 of any color. 5 mana for a 3-4. When it enters the battlefield, you put two colorless treasure artifact tokens into the bat and uh, with sacrifice this card by tapping it, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Right away, these cards are going to be far better than, say, or these tokens are going to be far better than, say, like the gold counter tokens you got found a little bit in Theros or clue counters. Um, or, excuse me, clue, yeah, clue tokens. Uh, they're just because the ability to add mana is very important, and the ability to add any color of mana is also very important. Now, the card itself, uh, for 5 mana, you're getting 2 mana free, basically, and your artifacts you could play in melee. So, technically speaking, you're actually only paying th uh, 3 mana for this because you're getting 2 mana in return in exchange, uh, and because you're getting any color. So, you could play this and then play a 2-drop, uh, and you could be totally fine. And that, I could see a lot of value coming out of cards like this. Dead Eyes Tormentor is 2 of any color, 1 black for, again, a human... Uh, Human Pirate, 2-2. Two, two. So it's a 2-2 two, two for 3. Raid. Whenever, when it enters the battlefield, if a creature attacked you know, with... Uh, or excuse me. If a creature you attacked with... Excuse me. If you attacked the creature this turn, target opponent is card's card. So Raid was from... Phew, cons. And um, Raid was fine. It had its decks. Raid's come back, so the Raid decks are going to get a bit of a bump. This one's... Oh, it's a common. 
it's okay. It's you're gonna basically be you're basically mind mind rotting, but just for one less card, but you're getting a body attached to it. So that's pretty cool. Uh, now one of the big thing, the dinosaur mechanic, uh, is not called tough. A lot of people were going around calling it tough. It's not. It's called enraged. Sun Cro uh, crowned hunters is two red, four of any color, six mana for a five four dinosaur. Uh, and it's eating another dinosaur, little raptors. Uh, Enrage. Whenever it, whenever Sun Crown Hunters is dealt damage, deals three damage to target opponent. So basically, whenever a creature is dealt damage, set effect's gonna happen. Because we have another Enrage card. It's gonna be in the next video. It's that mythic green dinosaur for like six. That's like five seven or something like four or six six seven six something like that. It's that big son of a bitch that um is gonna be put that uh, shows off that it's there's multiple Enrage effects. Uh, in this case, when it's still damage, deals three damage to target opponent. Now, very key thing here. Um, th this is whenever. So basically, if it's blocked, you're doing three damage to a target opponent. If it's not blocked, but you're able to like maybe ping it for one. If you can like maybe do something that pings something for one per turn, then you can get a lot of mileage out of this card. Especially if they haven't done anything to destroy it at all in the turn. So, I, even the common enrage card like this, 5-4 for 6 is just, if it were just a vanilla creature, it'd be, it'd be alright. I mean, you'd maybe play it like is one of the last cards you'd pick just to have something big on the field. But with the extra effect on there, this is a card you want to be attacking with all the time. I love this card. Dinosaur, you bet your ass I'm making a dinosaur deck. I often say to, like, Mark and stuff like I honestly feel this might be one of the uh, blocks where I actually get one, like, buy a box of the set. No joke. Because dinosaurs are going to be a huge thing, I may very well do that. I'll probably go with the fat pack first. Excuse me. The bundle first. Always going to be fat packs. Don't let anyone kid you. Uh, <laughs> at least that's how I'm always going to call them. Um, let me just make sure on that. Uh, okay, so we only got two other mechanics to talk about for this. And then we're going to go through an extra couple of cards. Now, they actually spoiled Jace. Jace cutting Castaway. And they're talking about now that they're changing up the rule of Planeswalker. Now it's Legendary Planeswalker. Um, and we'll get to that in just a second. But Jace Cunning Castaway is two blue uh, in one of any color. So it's three mana for three loyalty. Right of that, pretty solid. Plus one. Whenever uh, one or more creatures you control deals combat damage to to a player this turn, draw a card, then discard a card. So loot. So whenever, you attack, whenever a creature you control attacks and deals damage, loot. Minus two. Create a two-two blue Elemental illusion, illusion token with whenever a creature becomes a target, a spell sacrifice it. And minus five, and this is the one that's really kind of interesting. Minus five, create two. Uh, eight, eight. Come on, there we go. Create two tokens that are copies of Jace Cunning Castaway, except they're not legendary. That is weird. That is really weird. Now, I don't know, I can't say, I mean. The first abilities, it doesn't protect itself, but you know, the second one does. Most, The first two abilities, the minus and the plus, the ones that you can usually play from the get, should usually try. You should usually be able to protect your Planeswalker if possible. And the second one does, so provided it doesn't get targeted. And you get card draw with the other one. But that one, that is weird. Because basically what he's saying is, okay, now we're going to create basically two copies that are the exact same as when they came out. So you're going to get two more uh, three... Oh, the Planeswalkers, you can either make an illusion, make two illusions, draw, loot, whatever, and repeat. So that's weird. I don't know how good this thing will be, but I, first off, story-wise, it's interesting to see that Jace was able to keep his mind somewhat into, at least kind of intact. See, I heard Planar Castaway, and I'm thinking more like he's gone kind of insane talking to himself, like, well said, and maybe he has. Also, real cool in the artwork, there's like this giant, I don't know if it's a dinosaur, sea serpent, whatever, right behind him. That is freaking awesome. I hope that thing gets a card, whatever it is. But one uh, one big key thing to talk about with the Legend Rule for Planeswalkers is, now that it's Legendary Planeswalkers, you, before you couldn't have more than, say, one Jace Planeswalker uh, on the field, or Bolas, or Chandra, or Gideon, whatever. Before, you couldn't have multiple copies of a Planeswalker, regardless of the name. Now you can. Now you can't have multiple Planeswalkers. So you could theoretically have every copy of Jace on the field, or every copy uh, of each different base, Jace on the field, and it's fine. <laughs> and that's kind of scary. Because if you were to somehow amass an army of Jaces, that is frightening. 
That is like just pure and utter board domination right there. Um, then we, uh, now, now see, the speculation was true. Double face cards have returned. However, they returned in a very interesting way, and they explained it in this. Basically, uh, double face cards are going to probably be artifacts or whatever, uh, and they're going to transform into treasured lands. They're going to turn into the uh, lands that, you know, have treasure on them. So we start off with treasure map. It's an artifact rare, two of any color. Uh, pay one, then tap, scry for one. Put a landmark counter on treasure map. Then, if there are three or more landmark counters on it, remove those counters, transform treasure map, and create three colorless treasure artifact tokens. Um, based, and we know what those do. Now, when you transform it, you transform it into Treasure Cove. Now, Treasure Cove is add a colorless mana to your mana pool, sacrifice a treasure, or tap, add a colorless, tap, sacrifice a treasure, draw a card. These are going to be really interesting. Uh, they're going to be extremely interesting. But honestly, I think I'd just save the treasures for mana, not use them. Maybe if I was, like, down on cards, I'd use it for the draw. But uh, And the art, by the way, they got this cool artwork. looks like straight out of, um, honestly, it looks like straight out of, like, Treasure Island. It's, like, it's really cool looking. Again, another thing I'm probably going to get, I'm going to get the art book for this. No doubt I'm getting the art book for this set. Uh, then I talked just briefly about the two, three cards that got spoiled elsewhere. Uh, this is probably due to that whole, uh, traveling thing. They said, you know, get your marker, travel, more, more farther you travel, more cards will be revealed, blah, 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 thing like that. Uh, head, uh, headwater sentries, one blue, three bending color, two, five. So, it's a two, five for four. Generic. If I had to, I'd play it. Uh, Queen's Bay Soldier, one black, blue on a, one white. Excuse me, sorry, one black, one of any color. What am I talking about? Two, two. It's a bear. It's fine. Unfriendly Fire. Common, one red, four of any color. Unfriendly fire, just four damage to target creature or player. It's a burn spell. It's a big burn spell. Nothing else to really talk about with that. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching this video. I'll be back with the other spoilers in a little bit. Um, really, I'm really going to love it. I think this is going to be one of my favorite sets to date. So, yeah. stay. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you in a little